So last time we started talking about the anti-mortem changes in the body. Now it's time to move on to the next step, which are the post-mortem changes in the body. Post is after, and mortis, mortem means death. So we'll start with the first step. It's definitely something I could use today, being that it's 87 degrees outside. Algor mortis. Post-mortem algor mortis is the cooling of the body after biological death has occurred. We talked last time about anti-mortem algor, so this could be a continuation of that, but if it's not, it's going to happen eventually. It's a physical change in the body, which means that it changes the state of the remains, but it doesn't create a chemical byproduct. So within the first hour of death, around 2 degrees Celsius is lost from the body, and roughly 1 degree per hour is lost after that. Ultimately, the temperature that the body will reach depends on the ambient temperature, or the room temperature. And actually, there's an equation that you can use to determine the time of death. It's called the Gla Glaster or Glaster equation. But of course, this equation is used as a linear guide, so it can actually trick you into thinking that algor mortis occurs in a straight line fashion, which isn't the case at all because there's a lot of other extrinsic and intrinsic factors that affect algor mortis and the time at which it's reached. The first that we'll talk about is body surface to body mass, or it's sometimes called corpulence. The more fat you have on your body, the more heat you're going to store. And all of this excess heat can cause the body to begin decomposing faster. And we'll talk more about that later. Another factor is the body temperature at the time of death. Just as we talked about in the last video, in the antemortem changes in the body, if someone dies with a fever, it's certainly going to affect the time or how long it takes for the body to cool. Just as if they died cold, they're going to get there quicker. Another important factor that's kind of confusing, but it is really important, is the rate of metabolic activity. Metabolism, simply put, is the amount of energy your body burns to maintain itself, to just keep yourself alive. And more energy burned means more heat that's created. So more muscular people tend to burn more calories just to maintain their muscles and teenagers tend to burn more calories than adults. And I actually found a Scientific American article. It says that it takes anywhere from four to 10 minutes for cell metabolism to cease after death. So that could potentially mean 10 full minutes longer for cells to realize that they're working toward the pointless goal of keeping the organism alive and to stop creating heat energy. So I know it is kind of confusing to grasp this concept. I knew it took me a little bit. But it does also show you how important it is to have a fundamental knowledge of organic chemistry just to work in this field. So the third important thing that affects algor mortis is clothing and environment. Clothing can sometimes act as an insulator, which would keep the heat in, definitely affecting the time that it takes for the body to reach algor mortis. And environmental temperatures will determine what the ambient temperature will be that the body needs to reach. Environmental temperatures can also determine the amount of time it takes the body to start decomposing. Simply put, higher temperatures means faster decomposition, and lower temperatures mean a slower amount of time to decomposition. So that basic idea should explain to you why they always show a body in a refrigerated drawer or pulling them out of a big um, industrial sized refrigerator in the CSI programs and stuff like that. So refrigeration does stave off decomposition and obviously that's helpful to an embalmer because you can't really embalm a too decomposed body. If it's gotten to the point where proteins have started breaking down in the body then it's impossible to embalm that body. But aside from staving off decomposition it has other benefits too. It staves off rigor mortis which has problems of its own that we'll discuss later and it also keeps the blood liquid in the system which means that it'll be easier for us to drain it before injecting the embalming fluids. Of course refrigeration isn't all sunshine and puppies and flowers because it can increase uh, liver mortis or liver mortis um, which can thusly increase post-mortem stain and it can also make the tissues hard enough that it would be really hard to, to position them or set the features to put them in a casket. Now, to review, the factors that affect algor mortis are body surface area to body mass, sometimes called corpulence, we have body temperature at the time of death, and we also have clothing and environment. So this is the first in a series of many. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to um, 
this series in particular because you're all morbid and disgusting. With a fever, it's going to take 